Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the two-year post-disappearance episode related to the case of then 16-year-old Devin Marsman. In a prior episode covering this case, which was recorded five months after Devin's disappearance, we met his mom, Teresa Gray, to discuss the state of the case at that point. Well, tonight, we're going to catch up to the present day by again meeting with Devin's mom, Teresa, but now just one week prior to the two-year anniversary of her son's last known moments. We're going to discuss the only slightly clearer understanding of the timeline, the lack of significant updates, and the massive public pressure being put on the Halifax police to progress this case in a meaningful way. So let's get into it. Tonight, in this episode of Nighttime, we'll again be joined by Teresa Gray to discuss the still unexplained disappearance of her son, Devin. It's Devin Marsman's 18th birthday, the second one his family has had to celebrate without him. It's not fair, like he deserves to be home. Devin went missing in February 2022 and was last seen in Spryfield. A year ago, Halifax Regional Police deemed the teen's disappearance suspicious. Now, nearly two years later, not much has changed in the investigation. We are following up on all leads that we get. We're following up on all the tips that we get. And again, we know there's people out there that have that information. But for his family, that isn't enough. Halifax Regional Police, do better. Teresa Gray says she has stopped at nothing to find her son. But on Devin's 18th birthday and on the eve of Thanksgiving, family and friends are doing all they can to keep his name out there. There remains a $150,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for his disappearance. So just to start, maybe give me a sense of what's changed since the last time we talked. When we last talked again, you there was the timeline of, of his disappearance was public, but the people associated with with it, we again, you weren't naming. Right. If you have to think of like kind of key developments over the last year and a half. You know, it's crazy because there's, the thing is there's not a whole lot of key evidence. Mm-hmm. So one thing, you know, after that house was searched 17 gala, mm-hmm. that's when they turned Devin's case criminal deemed suspicious. Yeah. They know for fact that that was Devin's last known place because Taxi confirmed dropping him off at Gala. And Gala was the place in Clayton Park? Gala is in Spryfield. In Spryfield, okay. That belonged to Trayton Marsman, the cousin. And Trayton is his cousin. Trayton's his cousin. Um, I know for fact the two last people that were with him that Thursday night were Austin Gugu and Trayton Marsman. Mm -hmm. Um, the police know that. The police tell me that they know they're lying, and they know they're lying. Um, and every time, you know, I ask f- about what's going on, they just tell me things are moving forward. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how you can keep telling me things are moving forward, but you don't give me anything to tell me that it's yeah. moving forward. And we're now going on the second anniversary. That's right. And it's this one thing that's unique about the story is the. People who were last seen with him, everybody knows they were last seen with him. And it seems everybody I talked to or everybody commenting online believe they're involved. So it's it's a constant um, swarm of people saying, like, why aren't they arrested? Why isn't more information coming out? And you live very close to where these people are associated. So you must encounter the Like, do you ever see these people or have any I never see them. And even before Devin disappeared, I never seen them either. Okay. You know, like the boy, like Austin's mother lives like three doors down from me, but she never raised her kids. Mm-hmm. Her father raised her kids. So he, you know, coming and going. Other than that, you don't really see them around the neighborhood. You know, and it's funny because every time, you know, if I throw in another name in the pod, they tell me there's the police will say, you know, we're sticking to what we know. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're sticking to what you know, why aren't they arrested? Mm-hmm. You know, because I had said to them, I don't understand, like, you know, Devin's last place. Mm-hmm. You know who he was with. I mean, the cousin, Triton, changed his story at least five times mm-hmm. from not being with Devin, period, until he knew we knew he was with Devin. 
to change in his story, you know, from waking up. And I think I said that before waking up and, you know, Devin was gone. And how could one minute he's not with you? And then the next minute, your story changes, right? And, and I don't believe either of these two have given their story like publicly. I'm, I'm guessing the various stories you get are either through family or through the police. Right. Like I've never seen, despite their names being so connected to the case, I've never seen them with an interview on TV or on the news or newspaper or anything. Nothing. The only reason I know about these stories is because when Devin didn't return home on that Thursday mm -hmm. and then a couple days had went by and the boy next door, he said to my daughter, oh, Devin was at my brother's house in Clayton Park. He came there with Austin and Trayton. Mm -hmm. So right away, Devin's father, Richie, he called his nephew, Trayton's father, and he said he wanted Trayton to call him. So he calls him and he says, where's Devin? First of all, he wasn't with Devin. He never seen Devin, like, at all. Mm -hmm. And then when he knew that, you know, well, you were last night with him, you know, in Clayton Park, the story started changing. You know, we left there. We went our own separate ways. Then the next story was, you know, we went back to my house. We went to sleep. Devin was gone. Mm -hmm. But the stories just keep changing. He's never once ever called my house, ever. Mm -hmm. To say, you know, did you hear from Devin? Did you find Devin? His father, his mother, they have never called my host. And when Richie reached out to his nephew to say, you know, you got to get Trayton's mother, you know, like to pressure him, her response, she's not getting involved. Well, I'm sorry, you're already involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's not the kind of thing you choose to be involved in or no. not if you're there. No. Or if your name's even connected in any way to your family or whatnot. Uh, these, these two that were last with him, they're no stranger to um, the police or to stories of crime in Halifax. I've come across several articles referencing court appearances and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I know yourself and I believe your supporters have gone to some of these hearings. Yes, I have. What can you tell me about kind of their their legal uh, status as of present? Well, I know two of my supporters had gone to his last court appearance. Mm -hmm. It was just before Christmas in December, I think early December. And it was related to guns. And it was a three day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then it was supposed to be postponed to the 22nd of December. But instead he, the following week, I think he changed his plea to guilty. <clears throat> but he doesn't get sentenced till August or wow. yeah, to August. Wow, it's crazy how that, how that happens. But you know, coming, Coming out and actually putting their name on their pu on the public record, as you have, were you worried at all? Like, or, or talk, or, try, or did the police try to talk you out of naming them publicly? You know what? It's like this. I'm not worried at all. If they have nothing to hide, they should come forward and say, you know, we were with Devin, but then Devin left. Mm -hmm. Tell me something. Mm -hmm. You know, they've never once commented on any article. They never once contacted, you know, and Richie's the uncle. They never contacted. I'm not worried at all. My main concern is to find my son. When we last talked, the civilian searches were still very active. There was a lot of searches planned. Now, coming on the second anniversary, what is the status of that or what has changed with the searching? Well, honestly, we're still searching, but right now the weather's not good. Mm -hmm. So when the weather is good, we try to focus on all different parts, like Spryfield and Harrietsville. Mm -hmm. We probably searched almost all the woods there. Mm -hmm. um, I won't continue. I mean, we will continue like to keep searching unless something comes up. But unless either there's an arrest or the police find my son, I will continue mm -hmm. to search. Are there, aside from the civilian searches, let's say last i'm sure it's not happening now in the winter but even like last summer were the police or like anyone else involved in actual searches or was it all on you no search and rescue actually did two they did one that i just can't disclose that information on that search that was the last one in the summer and then they did one that was roach's pond mm -hmm. but the thing is if you got search and rescue like intertwined in your searches what, ev what, what piece of evidence was given, you know, that for them to do that search. Okay. Um, 
You mean like there would need to be some evidence to get them to go over? Yeah, like who gave somebody? I think must have gave a tip. Okay. Right. Oh, because so they searched somewhere that you didn't say you guys should search here. No, not at all. They called me and they told me that they were going out to do these searches. Okay. I mean, Roaches Pond, they had divers in the water. Okay. Why were divers in the water? What are they searching for? Wow, that must be terrible for you to... You to, know? This search is happening, and I'm sure you're glad that something's happening, but if they can't give you all that information, that would they go crazy. They can't give me anything. Like, every time I send a message and, you know, are there any updates, all they tell me is things are moving forward. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what's moving forward. Yeah. You know, I guess that maybe will answer my question. But what kind? What is the relationship at? The, what is the relationship like at this point between yourself and the police and the investigators leading this case? Well, the Holly, the one that was a liaison, she's actually off right now. She was having some medical issues, mm -hmm. so she's off for about six months. And the other ones, I don't really hear from them. Mm -hmm. You know, I sent um, Melanie, which is one on the on Devin's case. I sent her, you know, are there any updates? She just tells me things are moving forward, you know, and when they have something, I'll be the first to know before it's reported. Mm -hmm. So they're obviously doing their, whatever they're doing behind the scenes, <clears throat> they're doing their own search and their own investigation, but there's certainly one happening between yourself and your supporters I see it happening in you know in plain sight on Facebook. There's mm -hmm. lots of, um, I guess I don't know if you'd say rumors or speculation or theorizing, but there's lots of discussions about Devin and the people involved in this case. Has the kind of the public interest in the story moved anything along, or, or got or, or um, brought any new evidence or information to the surface? I don't think it's like moving things along, but I know it's putting Devin out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people contact me, you know, they want justice for Devin for the car. Mm -hmm. I have people that want like, you know, posters for the windows or want to put up posters in their area. And I see them all over Halifax. Yeah. I see them at a lot in Tim Horton's drive through mm -hmm. And I often think like, I'm kind of surprised Tim's will allow it, but I'm glad they do. Yeah. But is that you doing it or your supporters? Like, why am I well, seeing them all over Tim Hortons? Well, the one on Bears Road, mm -hmm. the girl that's one of the managers there, she knows me because I go to that Tim's all the time. Okay. So she knows Devin's story. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, she wanted the posters to put up in the windows. Yeah, and that's right in the drive through window. Right in the drive through yeah. One on the drive through window and one on the front door. Yeah, and then on my way here today, as I mentioned before we're recording, the, the basketball court, there's a... Not a poster, it's a massive sign basically with with Devin's face and information. Yes, so you see is. them, if you're in Halifax, it's hard to not know Devin's face and story at this point. You know what the sad thing is? The sad thing is, honestly, I did not know that Devin was hanging out with those boys at all. Mm -hmm. I would have never condoned Devin to hang out with those boys. Mm -hmm. You know, and the sad thing is I learned after he disappeared, mm -hmm. you know, that he was hanging out with these boys. And like I say, if I wish somebody just would have came and told me and for one Devin never would have told me that he was hanging out with them and like I said to the police before you know the only thing that Devin's guilty of is trusting those boys and thinking they were his friends mm -hmm. and if the cousin didn't do something to him himself I am 100% sure honestly that something happened to my son in 17 Gallicourt because it wasn't until Gallo was searched that Devin's case turned criminal deemed suspicious. Mm. Myself and his father, we both went for DNA. And when I asked what was found in that search, they tell me they can't tell me because it's hold evidence for their investigation. Okay. So therefore, if nothing was found in that house, it wouldn't be hold evidence for their investigation. Yeah. They would say nothing was found pertaining to Devin. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that's why it leads me to believe whatever happened to Devin, happened to Devin, in that house, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, a girl contacted me and she told me a friend of hers, you know, had told her that Trayton had gotten somebody to change the flooring in Gala. Now, if it's true, I'm not sure, but I took that to the police and I told them, you know, I want that, those floors tore up, like tear mm -hmm. them up, you know, and they told me that at this time, they can they don't have enough evidence to tear up the floors. They don't have enough evidence for the judge to sign off on a warrant oh. to tear up these floors. And I think it's disgusting because if 
they know that was Devin's last place. I don't think, I think the floors need to be torn off. Hell yeah. Who is the owner or who or, or is associated with this Gallagher? I have no idea. I know that it's just a rental property. Okay. It, do you know at the time that he was last seen who was renting it or who was responsible for the house? Trayton Marsman was renting that house at Gala. Okay. To live in or what was it used for? No, he was living in that house. Okay. Do you, um, maybe we don't want to say where he lives now, but is, do you know if that home is still occupied by people associated with Devin's case? I know that that house is basically rented out to somewhere else. And I know that Trayton Marsman is on house arrest in Lakeside at his parents' house. Okay. I won't give you the address. But yeah, please don't. He's that's where he's at. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But the Gala Court, that I think when we last spoke, I don't believe we named it by by address. But again, he was Devin was at the basketball courts near your place. He was seen there. He was at Clay, He was in Clayton Park. From there, he went to Gallicourt. Those are the three locations. Right. Associated so with the it? Thursday night, mm -hmm. he was at the apartment in Clayton Park. Yeah. Thursday night, then basically after he left Clayton Park, he went to Seventeen Gala. Mm -hmm. So the next day, I know for sure he was at Seventeen Gala because I was played. I was called at my work, and I was played a voice audio of my son calling a taxi to Seventeen Gala. Okay. They called me to ask me if that's Devin's voice. 100% it was Devin's voice. So that taxi took him to Romans Avenue, mm -hmm. from Gala to Romans Avenue, but Devin didn't come home. And Romans Avenue is right here. Is where, your neighborhood. Right, where you uh, see the poster. So Devin didn't come home that day. And then dispatch says, you know, the ta another taxi was called 7 p.m., picked Evan up at the basketball court, mm -hmm. took him back to Gala, 17 Gala. Now, that ta it was a major snowstorm. Mm -hmm. That taxi driver was confirmed watching Devin go in that door. So where is he? Okay. You know? So that's the thing. He's confirmed being at 17 Gala mm -hmm. and never seen again. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe something happened to my son inside that residence. Yeah, and you would think they'd have enough to do as thorough as possible a search of that house. Um, we're coming, again, we're coming up to the second anniversary, and I know a major event is planned by yourself and your supporters mm -hmm. outside of the Halifax Police Station. Tell me about that. What is, what is planned? And Yeah, so Devin will be missing for two years on February the 25th but it's a Sunday so the 23rd is a Friday so me and my protesters we will be in front of the Halifax Police Department basically I just want the police to do their job like I don't know what they're doing and what they're not doing mm -hmm. but obviously Devin's still missing mm -hmm. you know I'm not getting any information whatsoever you know and I know where he was and I know who he was with and to me, I just think knowing where he was and who he was with, to me, I think that should be enough. Like, I don't understand what key piece of evidence we need mm -hmm. to basically yeah. to do something. It seems at this point, like, you need to solve it for them to do something. You know, and that's basically what we're doing, you know. Like, I had a reporter come here a few weeks ago with Chronicle Herald, mm -hmm. and he did a story on police misconduct mm -hmm. because in the beginning of Devin's case... There was a lot. Mm -hmm. I was never ever told that Gala was searched. My detective told me, she said, we can't say we did and we can't say we didn't. But then there was a post on Devin's page with some residents of Gala and they said Gala was 100% searched because there were forensics there for a few days. Then Sean Carvery, his name's already out there. It's okay. So Sean Carvery piped up, and he got into a conversation, which he should never got into a conversation. He's a police officer, right? That's right. He's yeah. a police officer, and he should have never got into the conversation because he was still active on Devin's case. Mm -hmm. And he had said, you know, basically that I and the family were 100% knowing that Gala was searched. We were told Gala was searched. 
So then I had a pipe in there and I said, unfortunately, I was never told Gala was searched, ever. So then we took that information and that went to his boss. So then the other officer that was on there, basically Scott Farron or Fairburn or I think Fairburn, he, so I sent, after nine weeks of Devin missing, I sent an email to the female officer and it stated that, you know, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but unfortunately I don't feel enough's being done. Mm. It's nine weeks and Devin's still missing. Within five minutes, I got a phone call from Scott, 7 a.m. in the morning, exactly, screaming in my ear, telling me how dare I play favorite female cop, how dare I basically um how do i know what they're doing and what they're not doing and i said you know basically i don't know what you're doing but it's nine weeks and he's still missing mm -hmm. right so then anyway he proceeded to scream in my ear and then i just said you know what scott you have yourself a nice day and i hung up wow i sat on that for about a month then a month later i called his boss scott mcdonald and i said that i wanted sean and Scott removed from Devin's case ASAP. Mm -hmm. I told him what happened. I told them, you know, basically you can touch base with the female officer because she has the text. And she called me five minutes later and said, if I would have known by showing him that text, because they were the lead officer, so she had to show them. She said, if I would have known by showing him that text that he was going to call you and talk to you in that manner, I would have never gave him that text. So I said to their, you know, their commander, their, you know, that you can contact her. She knows exactly how he spoke to me. She has the text. So they were both removed. He said, you know, basically they will be removed from the prime and, you know, they'll have to stay on the case maybe in the back. And I'm like, as long as I don't have to deal with them, mm. I don't care. And then last summer I had another um, run in. So Holly, she was on vacation. I called her partner and I said to him, you know, are there any updates? And the only thing that he said to me is, I'm gonna have to wait till it comes out in the wash. I said to him, my son is missing and I'm not gonna wait for anything to come out in the wash at all. I hung up from him. I called RCMP. I told them what happened. And they said because Devin went missing in Spryfield, it was HP, like Halifax Regional yeah. Police and not the, them people, like RCMP. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so i not in contact with him neither. And then after it turned criminal, now he's got another whole set of investigators. Wow. It's just, the way they talk to you and the way it's handled is just it's crazy. unimaginable as an outsider. I honestly feel that Devin's case got lost in the shuffle in the beginning. Mm. First of all, you know, they would come here and they would show me pictures of boys that didn't remotely look like Devin mm -hmm. at all. And when I asked them, like, are you looking for the right child? You know, they're like, well, we just want to show you different pictures. They don't look like Devin, you know, like mm. I have a few photos on my phone that look nothing like Devin, Yeah, you know? So I don't know, like, were they even looking for the right child? Yeah. You know, for seven months or so, you know, Devin's case was a missing case. Devin didn't run away from home. Mm -hmm. You know, he would have no reason whatsoever to run away from home, you know. So I just believe that they just missed it in the whole beginning. Yeah. Now coming up, coming up on the second anniversary, how, like, you're a mother with a missing child and it's, uh, I'm sure there's this, a part of you that's just panicking, but what is like the feeling like at, at this point? Like your life has changed so much where you're now Devin's mother, you know, searching for Devin. What is it, what has it been like for you to change your, kind of like even your role in the community to be kind of this tragic figure? Well, you know what? I don't like to be around too many people. Mm -hmm. If I see some people I know, I tend to go the opposite direction so I don't have to hear that confrontation of asking me the same question yeah. all the time. Are there any updates? Because apparently there are no updates. Mm -hmm. um, and that must hurt to say, right? A hundred percent. I mean, you know, like I'm totally consumed, like totally. 
and just trying to figure, you know, what else to do next, you know, because I even said to those officers, you know, like they tell me they're searching and I'm like, tell me where you search so I don't search these same places, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, I'm in woods for hours, mm -hmm. like literally hours. They tell me they can't tell me where they search. I don't understand that yeah. neither, you mm -hmm. know. So if you're out there searching and you know I'm searching, shouldn't you tell me where you searched? It just would make sense. So right? I don't go to those same spots, you yeah. know. And then, you know, I had some people call me that, you know, on um, Purcell's Cove a couple months back, there was a body found. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine, her friend lives on that road. She's seen forensics there. And that was on a Tuesday, I believe. Well, I didn't hear anything on Tuesday. And I mean, all those thoughts going through my head, is that my son that they found, you know? Mm -hmm. But then Wednesday, I got a phone call saying, you know, the remains that were found were definitely not Devin. Mm -hmm. So if you knew forensics were there Tuesday, why didn't you call me Tuesday? Yeah. Instead of letting me set with it till Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not doing their job. They could be doing their job, but I don't know what key piece they're waiting for, mm -hmm. you know? If they know where he was and 100% who he was with, I think we should start with that. Yeah, certainly. You know? Uh, you, you mentioned a lot like of, of hearing from people. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing a lot of this is probably coming from Facebook and stuff, but how often are you hearing from people with tips or offering support or, or, or any context related to Devin's case? That's just it. I'm not hearing any like any tips or, you know, it's like the rumor mill, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you'll hear somebody say, like, terrible things, you know, like, one person said, you know, they heard Devin was burnt. Another person, you know, they heard they threw him in, in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we're searching and we're not finding the body. Are those stories true? Yeah, and they're not generally, like, what you're hearing probably is a lot of stuff you can't act on. It's just this morbid rumor, here it is, to the mother. You know what? The sad thing is, whoever was at that house mm -hmm. that night... They know 100%. Do you know how many people were there? Or other than the, the two you've mentioned, because I see a lot of names being thrown around and even photos of, like I'll see on Facebook, someone will post a photo of someone and they'll be like, you know, this person was is associated with it. She was at the bar last night and here's... I know. honestly don't know who was all at that house, but there's a female that we heard you know they she was called after the fact to help come clean up mm -hmm. you know so the police have her name and then i know for sure that you know trayton was there and austin was there but i'm not sure exactly who was in that house and then you have people saying oh it was an accident and like i said to the police if it was an accident why didn't they call 911 mm -hmm. why did they just discard them like garbage if that was the case yeah. right why yeah. didn't somebody just come clean and say you know something happened it wasn't meant to happen but it happened mm -hmm. right uh, a, a lot of times when when there's more than one person involved in a crime it takes some kind of relationship breakdown to happen before someone starts talking mm -hmm. if there are multiple people involved in this who generally appear to be uh, dishonest, nasty people. Are you surprised at all that after two years, one of them hasn't spoke up? And perhaps could that mean they're both equally involved? Like, I, I'm just kind of surprised the two of them aren't pointing the finger at each other. At this I honestly think whoever was there that night, whether they did it or not, they're all involved, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I don't understand, you know, what the police are thinking. Are they thinking somebody's going to come forward and say something? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I just think like that would be, for the police officers, that would be the easy resolution. If someone comes and they say, I was there, I know, and I'm mad at, you know, whoever, so here's what happened. Yeah, but, and I mean, I was told, you know, I was told, we know that they're lying, but they also know that we know they're lying. So mm -hmm. then why? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. To, to wrap it up again, coming on the second anniversary, um, is, is there anything else that you want to share with people about Devin's disappearance or living with the fact that your son is missing? Like, What can you tell us as, as, as a mother two years out in this? Well, as a mother, I mean, my life is just on hold, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, I just need to either somebody to be arrested or find my son. You know, I just need to know what happened to him. 
like or give me somewhere to go to find them Mm -hmm. you know but i mean living with odin yeah it's rough and and i've seen you put this out there just tell me where he is is like the you know what i pray to god every night that somebody even if they just slip a piece of paper in my mailbox you know just tell me you know like i'm constantly like driving and looking and but there's no signs how Mm -hmm. could there be no signs Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a significant piece of evidence? Nothing. There's there's no evidence. I mean, you know, like social media, he's not been on social media. Bank accounts, nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's never tried to access his bank account. Mm-hmm. His phone, there's nothing. It's like, how does a taxi drop you off at a residence and you're never seen again? Mm-hmm. But those people inside that residence they don't know anything mm-hmm. and they're but, still roaming around the city and they're still roaming around the city is right mm-hmm. and in and out of court mm-hmm. that's right so the next step for you is the um the event at the police station uh aside from raising uh, awareness of devon's case through that event is there anything else in the future that you're working on you know what i'm always trying to work on something And I'm sure once that's wrapped up on the 23rd, I'll be thinking what to do next. Because like I say, until I have answers for my son, I'm not giving up at all. I want to thank you for joining Teresa Gray and I for this discussion surrounding the disappearance of Devin Marsman. If anyone listening has any information related to Devin's disappearance, please contact the Halifax Police or Crime Stoppers. I've added their contact information in this episode's description. Additionally, if anyone close to Devin or his disappearance would be interested in speaking with me, I'd very much like to hear from you. You can find me at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. Now with that said, I'm going to wrap up this episode, but before we part, let me end with some thanks. First, a big thanks to Teresa for spending some time with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. I'd also like to thank Monty Data, who contributes the music for this episode, and LJ from the Dystopian Simulation Podcast, who provides my intro and outro voiceovers. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. But with that said, keeping the show alive is and has always been an uphill battle. So if you want to help take a bit of weight off the show's back, make sure you're listening on the premium feed. And not only does the premium feed fund the creation of the show, it gives you the episodes two days early, gives them to you ad-free, and gives you access to a full back catalog of nighttime episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium right now at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. And with that said, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Barco, Melissa, and Laura, thank you for going premium. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can give me a hand by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know what we're doing here. If anyone listening has any story ideas, wants to give feedback, opinions, or present a theory related to this case, you can contact me at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte. 